back to uh, oh. <laughs> there we go okay before we start please allow me to acknowledge the beautiful territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish and Musqueam Nation on which uh, our BCT, BCIT campuses are located on always such an honor to work on these territories I'm Caroline Depetit, the Associate Dean for Business Administration from the School of Business and Media and along with Alicia Gardner um, who's our support today uh, will be your host um, we have a few guests, uh, which we'll introduce in a second, but throughout uh, this, question, this session, if you have questions, please write them at the bottom of your screen. There's a Q&A, so write your question in there. We're going to try to avoid the chat, um, so you can do that if you have questions as we um, go through this session. Our Summer Student Success uh, Webinar Series is really to help you, uh, first-year students, to be uh, successful, to help you be successful in the fall. We are all online in the fall, so these sessions really are there to kind of familiarize yourself with uh, different um, initiatives that we're going to have throughout the fall and how things are going to work. Um, Alicia, can you do the poll? Just I want to know who has attended who has attended one or two, the first poll there. Here's a poll for you guys, for people that are attending. How many student success webinars have you attended so far included this one? So you can answer one, two, three, four, five. And Alicia, you can make um, the results visible as people fill it out as well. If that's possible. Are you not able to see it? No, not right now. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. We're just doing a poll, poll Angeline. Uh, we, we just started. Okay, uh, can you publish the results, uh, Alicia? Hold on, there you go. You should okay, be able to see it Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna make note of it here. So a few, it's their first time, that's great. Uh, two, nobody, and then uh, one person. So most of you have been attending quite a few, which is great. Um, so thank you. I'm gonna end the poll here. Uh, your facilitator today is Morgan. Morgan, wave your hand. Morgan Westcott. <laughs> Morgan's our new associate dean with marketing management. We're super excited to have Morgan uh, as part of, of the team. Mark, Morgan's been at BCIT for a very long time. When were you a student at BCIT, Morgan? I'm a graduate of the class of 2004 of okay, the great. marketing management option. Awesome. So not only is uh, Morgan a, a graduate, but she uh, has been teaching at BCIT for a long time and again is now the Associate Dean for Marketing and Management. Um, Morgan joins us with quite a few guests, either current students uh, or graduates. So we're really excited that you guys can join us today. Morgan, I'll let you introduce uh, everybody. And again, today you will get some tips uh, on how to be successful online, mostly with your time management. I'll remind you of this at the end, but we do uh, have another session next Monday and we'll learn about platforms and apps that you will be using during your online courses in the fall. So with this, I guess I will leave it with you, Morgan. Um, go ahead and thank you again all for being here. Uh, all right, guys. So I am going to do this, there we go. Uh, so welcome to our webinar on managing your time. Uh, as mentioned, uh, my name is Morgan. I'm the Associate Dean for the Marketing uh, Department in the School of Business and I have some guests with me. It says student guests. Some of, the, uh, some of our guests have graduated and I'll let them introduce themselves in a moment. And then uh, I'm going to give a little bit of an overview on what BCIT is like. We just want to make sure that you're uh, prepared for what it's going to be like to be a full-time student at BCIT. And then uh, working, kind of crowdsourcing with this group of students, uh, I've, we've put together some keys to self-management. So it kind of goes beyond the time piece. It's really about managing yourself. And those are mindset, prioritization, and tools. Then the students are going to offer some words of wisdom, and then it's going to be open floor. Now, I already see there are uh, there's a good question in the chat about some really specific things to expect for uh, fall term. And so certainly at the end, when we do our open floor, either myself or Carolyn can address some of the logistical things that you might be worried about. And then uh, you can also just choose a student directly um, to ask them about their experience. Uh, and just to speak to the fact that I have a disappearing and reappearing hand, I'm sure most of you are familiar with uh, with 
Zoom technology, but uh, I am coming at you not from BCIT Burnaby campus where I normally work, but from uh, my basement. And so just to say right off the bat that um, these are really strange circumstances that we're going to be under this fall and they're going to be unique circumstances and everyone is going through this together. So I'm a brand new associate dean. I've actually not worked on campus since I started in this position. And so uh, we're going to try and give you some timeless advice, some things that you can use no matter where you find yourself, but we're also going to try and address the online context specifically. So I've introduced myself. I'm going to throw it over uh, to the rest of the panel just to, uh, yeah, just to tell us who they are and kind of and what brings them to the panel tonight. All right, I'll start. Hi, everyone. I'm Taryn Antlick, and I'm entering my second year of the Marketing Management Diploma. And hi, my name is Maria Bushman. I'm a recent graduate of the Marketing Management Diploma program from the Tourism Option, and currently I work with BCIT Applied Research and clearly have gotten a quarantine hair color since that had shown up. Hi everyone, sorry my webcam's not working today. My name is Anita, I'm entering my second year at BCIT, also in marketing management, communications option. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie. I graduated the marketing communications program, I don't know, like three years ago, I think. Um, I work for Jungle Media and I love coming to these panels because I love talking about what I do and how to help students get to where I am. All right. Um, my name is Hunter Stones. Uh, I'm a, uh, a recent graduate of the marketing management program with a specialization in entrepreneurship. Uh, I'm currently, um, well, I'm about to enter uh, my bachelor's of business administration starting in September. And I'm also currently serving as the BCIT student association president. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Angeline Chen and I just graduated from BCIT with a major in marketing management, the entrepreneurship option. So I'm in the same program with Hunter. So right now uh, I'm working for my cousin's business as a marketing assistant and also a graphic designer. Thank you. Awesome. So um, in preparing for this presentation, I asked uh, our panelists to talk a little bit more about what BCIT is like. And so I'm just going to give you a quick context setting for what you're about to enter, um, especially as students in a full time program. Um, Let's talk about what we're all working towards, which is the fact that, you know, 96% of our grads uh, are employed. Most of uh, our panelists uh, are already working. Um, you, you know, as soon as you finish your program, you're going to be kind of thrust into industry is the idea. And that certainly was my experience. So uh, after, at the end of my two-year program, I had done a practicum. Uh, in industry for the Arts and Cultural Guide to BC, and I was hired right out of my practicum and uh, ready to work. So what does it mean uh, when we say come to BCIT and get ready to work? Well, uh, one of the first things that you might find at BCIT is it's a bit like boot camp, um, harder than I imagined. Uh, it's like I was being pushed to do more than humanly possible. Uh, from another one of our panelists, uh, BCIT is a kayak trip. It's like a kayak trip over rough seas. So at first your surroundings seem challenging and unpredictable, but over time you become more comfortable navigating the environment. BCIT is also about connection. So it's more than studying and getting knowledge. It brings out the best in you and also connects you with people who have the same passion and purpose in life. It's about growth. So you're not only gonna grow academically, but as a person. It's a fantastic experience in different team dynamics. Uh, BCIT loves teams, which is why you might hear people say BCIT stands for being crammed into teams. Uh, is it a marathon or a sprint? I love this. BCIT is a sprinting marathon. It's both. It will keep you on your toes and test you to the point of tears sometimes. It is hard and it can be intimidating by that, but that's why you're here. Uh, BCIT takes the skills and aptitudes you have, teaches you a few more, and refines you into an efficient working professional. 
BCIT is like taking cough syrup when you're sick. You really don't want to. It tastes awful, but it works, and you're happy that you did, and it's doable. It's really fast-paced and busy, but it's doable. So I just wanted to give you a sense of uh, if you haven't already heard from friends and family, maybe someone recommended BCIT to you, maybe someone in industry said, oh, like we hire people from BCIT, that range of quotes should sort of give you an indication of, of, of the kind of challenge that you're facing. And so the next section is really focused on how to make it work. And so as I said, I crowdsourced these ideas from the panelists and a few other people who weren't able to join us tonight and we came up with these themes or three keys uh, in all of their advice. So I got lots and lots of advice and I distilled it down to these three things. So the first thing to think about is your mindset, right? You actually want to come into your program with a goal in mind. And it can be really helpful between now and September to write down where you want to be when you finish your program. So you probably are two years out. Um, and uh, you might already know you want to do the BBA, so maybe you're three years out. But write down something along the lines of, you know, by the end of my program, I want job offers from three local marketing firms, or by June 2022, I'll be starting a job that pays at least this much per year, or by December of this year, I want to achieve 80% average in my courses. This is going to be really unique and personal to you. I know that for myself, when I came to BCIT, it was less about the financial goals. And I know a friend of mine who was like, it was all about the financial goals. She actually had a price tag on what she wanted to be doing in industry but write this down so that you can refer back to this uh, when you're when you're in the struggle so to speak oh there we go the, the next thing is to really prepare other people in your life for what you're taking on so this is not like every other program and it's important that the people in your life know that so your friends your family uh, if you're currently working uh, really start to prepare your employer for a big reduction in hours, availability, and headspace. Uh, you know, if you're doing some help around the house, if there's a chore that you always do, uh, if you have roommates, if you have a life partner, if you have children, right? Everyone's coming at this with a different uh, personal and professional network. Let those people know. The next tip is to audit your circle. So if you're really serious about reaching your goal and you, uh, like when I came to BCIT, I had some friends that just, they were in a different phase of life and they wanted to spend as much time possible on the beach and hanging out and working part time. And, you know, I'm happy to say they're still friends of mine today, but for the time when I was at BCIT, I, I tried to really focus on keeping those people in my life that had the similar goals. And you're going to be in a set with other students from the program and you're gonna start to be able to pick out those people in your set that you're like, yeah, we have similar goals. These are the people that I should be hanging out with. Set up some rewards for hitting milestones. So someone said this is like cough syrup. Make sure you have the antidote at the ready. If you make it to Christmas and you got that 80%, right? Like, is it going up to Scandinav Spa or is it just buying yourself that pair of sneakers, right? Try and set yourself up for a reward so that when you do hit that milestone, you're really patting yourself on the back because you, you're going to deserve it. Um, and try to learn how to take care of yourself through all of this. So if you can't, um, if you can't process your feelings, if you can't take care of your body, if you can't, um, you know, get some healthy eating habits on the go, uh, you're just going to be in a tougher position. So the more you can start to think about you know, okay, every Sunday night, I'm going to get that fridge full of healthy snacks. I'm going to meal prep. I'm going to get together with a friend from school and we're going to batch cook for the week, or we're going to send each other a motivational quote each morning. The more you can start to think about taking care of yourself through this process, the better. So now we're on to kind of what you would expect from this sort of webinar, right? It's like, how do you prioritize your time and tasks? So uh, Hunter threw this slide together for me, which is great because actually Taryn had brought this up in an email to me as well. Uh, it's something that I used to talk about in one of my lectures, but it's about prioritizing your time and your tasks. And it comes from a long gone, very esteemed, very effective US president who used this system to prioritize what kind of things he should be working on leading the country. And so 
you want to start to look at this avalanche of things that you're going to have to do from the last week in August for the next two years at least and start to get a bit of a flagging system together. So the way you can flag things is by asking yourself, how important is this and how urgent is this? And then rank your tasks. So if it's very important and very urgent, you do it first. If it's very important and not urgent, you throw it over here. If it's not important but very urgent, you do it second. So putting things into these quadrants and attacking your day uh, by prioritizing what's on the on the table is a really, really good idea. So another way of doing this, and this um, comes from Maria, is just to traffic light your list. So go through your list and say, okay, I have to get this done today. It would be best if this were done today, and this would be nice if there's time. And that way you tackle the red list first, then you move on to the yellow list, and then you can pick a couple of those nice green items if you have time. So another really good recommendation, and I think this is one of Hunter's slides as well, is to prioritize yourself. So especially when you have um, this worry perhaps about Zoom fatigue and also just understanding that you're a precious commodity, you're your most precious resource, think about whether or not you can do a task by yourself. So if you can do a task by yourself, then do it by yourself. There's plenty of opportunity to work with other people at BCIT, don't worry. So if there's a chance you can do it by yourself, then find yourself a spot without distractions, put in some headphones and study or work on that project or get, get the task done. If you can't do it yourself, then FaceTime your group or um, use Zoom or use another meeting where you can have a, like a tool to get together, make an agenda and schedule and then stick to it and don't get distracted. So you'll get into a pretty good habit early on of showing up to a team meeting, let's say in Zoom, and someone puts the, the agenda in the chat and then everyone just keeps referring back to that. And you can even assign an amount of time to it. Like, okay, we're gonna spend 10 minutes just catching up with each other. And then we're gonna spend five minutes talking about this part. We're gonna spend five minutes doing this part. We're gonna spend 10 minutes dividing up our tasks and everyone's gonna get a copy of this over email so we know exactly what we said. Um, bringing that rigor is really, really important. So then some tools that you're gonna to need to know, and there are webinars specific to a lot of these tools. So there's a whole webinar, for example, that's specific to the Learning Hub. Um, and then I'm gonna to talk to you uh, just a couple of other things that it's important to have ready to go right out of the gate. So this is what the Learning Hub looks like. And again, I highly recommend looking at the webinar just for the Learning Hub, because this is really going to be, go figure, the hub for all your learning online. Uh, but one of the most important things I think is the notification. So going into your profile, updating your photo, making sure that you have a current email address, you have other ways for your instructors to reach you is great. And then go right into that notifications piece and decide what information you want. So you can get instant notifications on quite a few things. And this, you know, play around with your preference. You don't want to overwhelm yourself, but um, it's certainly handy to get an email, for example, when your assignment due date is two days away. It's that nice kick in the butt. That might red light something for you on a list, right? Like, oh, wow, okay, hmm, it is really time to get to work on this. Um, so do have a look at that notifications tool. Uh, it's going to really help you from the very beginning. Now, thinking of your setup, this is an actual picture of my desktop. So I just want to explain that, you know, when I say we were all thrown into this, I mean, we were all thrown into this. Even as an associate dean, I don't have some super high-end, fancy, Scandinavian, motorized standing desk. I have a pile of books, and then I have a laptop stand that I ordered off of Amazon. I have a gaming headset. I have uh, a keyboard that I bought. You know, I have a pretty inexpensive but efficient workspace that I've set up for myself. And because I'm an old, I like paper, and so these are actual, this is a, the actual to-do list that I had uh, written out, including making sure I take time for a nap. Uh, I have a paper calendar that's my week there, and then I use notifications electronically. 
your setup is going to be unique to you just do the best you can so again going back to that first point about letting people know what's up talk to that roommate or talk to your parents make sure that you have a dedicated space even if it's just this is my corner do not touch my stuff so that you have a place to go to school. You have a place where you can do your meetings uh, with your colleagues and then start to play around with what tools work best for you. So um, a couple of our panelists will tell you just use the G Suite for everything. Use a Google Calendar for everything. Color code everything. Um, and you know, sync it with your, your Gmail, just Google Suite for everything. Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, Gmail. Um, that seems to be a very popular option with younger people than I, uh, but not everyone does that. So Taryn was kind enough to um, send me a screenshot of her desktop where you can see she has um, these really cool little star shaped folders for all of the key things that she's working on. Nice, super tidy desktop. And then she pins a little to-do list and it's based on when things are due right what she has to do for the week what she has to achieve in each of these classes so she can jump into the appropriate folder and get the task done that she needs to so um, a really nice to-do list that's a little more digital than my scrolling on a pad uh, and just another way that that can work for you so we get a lot of questions about okay but what kind of laptop and what does it need to do so there is another webinar that's just on byod and byod stands for bring your own device and if you go to um, that webinar you'll get this information this is also available as a pdf and so yes there are certain things that we're asking you to have to be able to be comfortable and have the right equipment for school so make sure that you just look through that so that you're as ready to go as possible ahead of time another tool is communication so um, having been an instructor for quite a while I can say that this is where a lot of students it doesn't matter how organized a student is if you're not a good communicator it's going to be really hard for your faculty members and your team members to help you so Provide enough details in your emails for decisions. Help an instructor, instead of emailing your instructor, um, I'm having a problem or I don't know what to do or hey, can I make a Zoom meeting with you? Send them information so that they know what's going on. So if you can say, I'm, I'm having a personal challenge, I would like an extension on my assignment. I would like to hand it in on this date. Is that possible? And then if your instructor has something to work with, they're going to be uh, a lot faster in their response. Even when you're just communicating with other people from your program, try and get into the habit of avoiding this example here on the screen, right? Try not to use, hey, I used to get emails that said, hey, ma'am. Uh, it's That's not really a professional greeting. So just do your best in terms of trying to have a really professional solution-oriented communication as early as possible. Sorry, can I just jump in and say something about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think if you haven't worked in a professional setting before BCIT and you're looking to get into working in an agency or wherever, it's re this is the time for you to actually practice how to talk professional because in, there's so many times where I would ask an intern like, hey, can you send out an email or hey, can you talk to the sales rep and you know, ask him about whatever. And they'll always look at me like, how do I ask? What do I say? I'm like, what do you mean like just, just ask like what, what do you mean and I would have to have a draft or an example email for them to actually send out which I don't mind doing but then for me it's just like well how do you not know how to ask somebody professionally like can this contract be negotiated or something like that like I think th these are the kind of soft skills that for me I, I expect you to kind of know how to do it I don't expect you to write a full full-blown sonnet by any means but I expect you to learn how to know like to talk to people professionally absolutely and I think that um, that Melanie's touched on something really important here which is 
you know, it came through in those quotes earlier. This is why uh, so many people come to BCIT and especially the BCIT School of Business is, um, you know, I came into BCIT knowing how to manage a coffee shop nothing wrong with that but I didn't want to manage coffee shops anymore I wanted to work in a professional setting I wanted to make a good salary I wanted to you know make a difference in the world and be comfortable in an office setting and be comfortable in a professional setting and be comfortable giving presentations yeah. and jumping into webinars that where the technology is not functioning but <laughs> being prepared to to do that so um you know if you can remember some of these things in terms of setting your mindset prioritizing your tasks, creating tools and frameworks and getting help when you need it, you're going to be in a really, really good position uh, within a very short amount of time to just step very gracefully and almost automatically into an industry role. So um, we've already heard a, a great pearl of wisdom there. I, I'm just going to go around alphabetically and ask each person um, just for you know, their perspective or anything that they can contribute kind of to this broader conversation. And then we're going to open it up to questions. So we'll start uh, with Taryn. Okay, thank you, Morgan. So the first thing that I would say for my words of wisdom is just like Morgan said at the beginning is to keep that balance, especially of exercise. I found that I would make my day full of meetings with my groups and I would just have way too many things I wanted to get done in one day that I found myself sitting in the same chair from eight o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon or something. So it's definitely important to not get into that habit and have those times where you stand up and go for a walk for 10 minutes or you get up and maybe even just make a snack, you know, something super simple. But I do wish that even in the last um, bit of time where we finished off the semester online, that I allowed myself to get outside more and to really keep that balance of not getting stuck doing work for long periods of time. Because you are in your own home, you are going to find that your routine is going to shift. And so definitely sticking to a routine um, will, it helped me stay on track. And one last point I will bring up, which actually Anita gave me this tip, is to wear blue light glasses if you find your eyes are getting sore with the computer screens. Um, I wear some glasses like those and I do find that I can do my work for longer without my eyes hurting so quick. So thank you, Anita, for giving me that tip <laughs> earlier on. No worries. <laughs> That's great. Okay, over to Maria. Sure. Thank you. And like, as mentioned by Taryn, like even like a 10 minute dance break will do give you a whole lot of a better time, be able to work a lot more. But I have two little words of wisdom. So first and foremost is I like to call it the Sunday ritual. So just setting yourself up for your week is so key. So take that extra like hour at, on your Sunday night, put out, put out your tasks for the week, make sure you know what, what your what's due that week at all your group meetings like make sure you're set up and you know what's going on on each day so you don't have to do as much scramble thinking on for example like Tuesday morning and panicking, like what do I need to get done today so taking that extra time for yourself will make you a lot less stress it'll keep you a lot more organized and it'll keep you a lot more it'll make your time management a lot more efficient if you have that time to set yourself up for the week I am my blood runs speed products so any so on google task google calendar whatever you can do just make sure that you're set up for the week and another big thing which i learned pretty quickly after, after having to deal with the ikea delivery system during quarantine that was super fun but give yourself an actual workstation so doing work from your bed your back's gonna hate you first of all your neck's gonna hate you and you're not gonna get as much done having an actual area to do work is so helpful even if it's your kitchen table I have a very tiny desk in my corner that gets the job done, but it'll give you a spot so you're kind of going to school or going to work. You go to your corner, you do your work, you stand up, you take your lunch break, you go make yourself a snack, you go for a walk, and you come back to your workstation. And then when you can kind of clock yourself out at whatever it is, like 3 p.m., 4 p.m., when all your lectures and labs are done, you can kind of step away and then go on with the rest of your day instead of accidentally taking a nap after your like 9 a.m. Zoom call and sleeping for three hours tends to avoid that whole issue. So that those, those would be my two keys, words of wisdom of how to survive online school and time manage yourself. That's great. Thank you, Maria. Uh, over to Anita. 
Um, following the same kind of theme that Maria just talked about is planning out your time. Um, I personally like to plan out um, my due dates ahead of time. So I'll write them all out in a calendar or I'll write them all out in a list from like do first to do the latest. Um, and then of course, completing the assignments ahead of time and instead of completing them right before the deadline. So um, if you do it ahead of time, you'll get a few days to edit, to revise, um, just, you know, it's not gonna be as rushed and you won't feel as much stress. Um, and then also I find that when I'm reading something over and over again, I don't notice all the mistakes I've made. Whereas if I leave some extra time and then look over it the next day, then I'm put, uh, finding out a lot more of the tiny little things that I might've missed when I was reading it like five times the day before. Very good. Okay, back over to Melanie. Um, I think everybody's made good points, um, but essentially it's just setting yourself up for success, right? Even now when I'm working, um, whenever I have campaigns, I live off my blocking charts because that will tell me what needs to run next and what needs to stop. So if you can set something up like in advance, so that way when, when it does come time to hit live, all you have to do is press a button and you don't have to worry about, oh my God, where's the creative? Did, did the creative agency send it? Oh my God, where's the buy for this, blah, blah, blah. So if you work to actually set everything else up in advance, you have time to go back and forth with somebody like, hey, actually I'm missing these kinds of you know, creatives. That it's these specs, can you do it really fast? So that way the, it doesn't have to go back to the client where, hey, sorry, um, we kind of have to postpone it like five days because we didn't get an, a creative and the agency forgot. So my bad, like there's no such thing as that, right? You have to do make goods and the agency eats that. So you're on the hook for that. So just set yourself up for success and do everything in advance if you can, finish as much as you can. That's really good feedback. And just, again, um, it's so interesting to hear from someone who's in industry because um, she's talking about like a, a real world projects where there's yeah. like lots of money on the line. And, yeah. and, and, and for you as a student, it'll be more like set it up with your team and set up a, mm -hmm. a chart so you know exactly yeah. what pieces to pull together when because your client is going to be your teacher and your instructor is not going to be okay nope. with... I, I'm not getting this piece until next week. That's fine. You're also not going to get a grade. So um, yeah. you can kind of see that connection there between what it's like to study here and what it's like to work here. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, over to Hunter. Thanks, Morgan. Um, my, uh, my pieces of advice actually have nothing to do with time management or prioritization, uh, but they do have to do with mindset. So I have sort of these three things that I've told myself since my first week at BCIT and they haven't failed me yet and I'll keep holding on to them for as long as I live. Um, those three pieces of advice are first, always uh, aim to be proud of each task that you complete. Uh, the second piece is take no more time than you need uh, to complete your work. And the third piece is ensure that nobody gets left behind, which is really important this year given that, uh, that you're probably not gonna meet very many of your classmates in person. So there are always gonna be those people who are maybe struggling to, to adapt to, to the changes that, that we've all been thrown into. So it's so unbelievably important to ensure that you're, you're talking to the people around you, the people in your class, the people in other sets as well, just to make sure that, that everyone is, is sort of on, on the same page and with respect to that last point, um, I recently came across this, uh, uh, this list of 68 pieces of unsolicited advice. And um, one that stood out to me was uh, that it is perhaps the most counterintuitive truth in the universe that the more you give to others, uh, the more you get. So remember that when, uh, when you come to a crossroads of whether or not to help someone out or not. That's just lovely. <laughs> okay, over to Angeline. Okay, thanks, Morgan. Um, everyone has a really good point, so I'm just gonna give two tips of advices that I have. I think the first thing is that you really have to know, you really have to understand yourself. Like you really have to know that what is the best time that you are most efficient in the day. 
Like for example, in the first year, I always think that, okay, so I'm really like, you know, awake and I have really some creative and crazy things, crazy ideas in the morning. So I'm just gonna do something, you know, creative stuff in the morning. And then in the evening, I'm gonna do math or statistics. So just all about that, you really have to understand yourself and then you're gonna, you know, set up everything according to that. And the second tip is, I know that many of us in the, um, in the attendees right now, you guys are um, international student and me myself also. So I came to I came to Canada like two years ago and I was like um eighteen year old girl, like really innocent, doesn't know anything. And then I really understand that students just came to school really insecure and then not confident about themselves. And I just wanna remind you guys that um you guys are not alone. BCIT is always happy to help, people are really friendly and everything will be fine. Oh, that's great. Um, thanks to uh, all of my panelists for being so uh, generous with their advice and their feedback. I am going to stop the share so that we can go into questions and answers. Um, I haven't been able to see the chat while we do this. And I also see there's a Q and A. Um, yeah. Morgan, I'm gonna just jump in. Um, don't worry about the chat with Q and A. But sorry, here. Uh, the first one: Does anyone know when the full time session from July 27th has been posted yet? Well, we thought it was, and the person that's in charge is on a holiday vacation till next Monday. So I'm like, should I bother them during their vacation to do this? I think we'll wait till next Monday. So it will be posted next Monday. Sorry, we kind of just realized that um, the last few days. So it's coming and this week's also will be posted on Monday. Um, just one thing for the panelists, Anita, uh, there's some wrong names under your photos. So, sometimes that happens. Um, so Angeline, you can go to the three little dots beside your name and rename yourself because now you're, you're Anita right now. Make sure you have the right name. <laughs> Everyone is Anita. Yeah, that happens in, in Zoom for some reason. Uh, I'll let you uh, take the other question, Morgan. Sure. So um, in the Q&A right now, I only see one question, and it's from Any, and it says, when are core schedules for the fall term going to be informed to students? I actually don't know the answer to this. Carolyn? Well, this, the timetables are, um, are up, so I'll just put the, I'll answer and I'll put the link in the chat and in there. So let me just have a look. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, there, yeah, there is a timetable site. Would they also not be able to see their timetable loaded in my BCIT? Uh, <laughs> sorry, you're asking the wrong person. Uh, let me just investigate and I'll put some, 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 uh, I know it's a question that was asked in previous webinar, um, but I will put the link to the timetable. I think everybody should have access to that. Oh, students might know. Is it, does anybody, do you guys access your schedule? Through my well, someone, someone named Baron has said that you can see it on my BCIT, so .bcit.ca. Um, you should be able to see your information there already. You might, you, it's kind of cumbersome. You got to fast forward in time and hit a week in September and then it should load there. But we do also have a, a prettier, yeah, Baron's like, just log in and go to schedule. Perfect. Um, but we also do have a timetabling, um, a website that makes like a pretty version of your timetable. I have put um, the link for the timetabling website into the question. Ooh. into the answer section of that question into the answer question all right that's very um sophisticated um hard Drop d has a question is it possible to work one to two days per week while attending bcit is it common for students to work part-time and keep up with the workload um angeline uh it says that you're going to answer this question did you hit did you want to take this one yeah sure um uh, yeah uh, i can answer this question Cause like actually when I was um, doing full time at BCIT, I actually had a part time job. So I think I, I was working like around 10 to 15 hours a week. And I mean like it is, it is possible, but it's tough. And it also depends on like, what do you want to get out of when you graduate? Like for example, if you, if you achieve like a GPA of 
let's say like 80 out of 100. So I think, I mean, working part-time might not be possible, but if you really, you know, try to work hard and then you think that you can, you know, get into that kind of big commitment, I think working is possible, but you really have to be, you know, professional and really have to be good at managing your time because it's going to be really, because, you know, you need to sleep, you need to rest, and then you need to, you know, have your time with your own hobbies and family and friends. So, but um, I give just good luck with that, but it is possible. Yeah, yeah, I've had some friends who worked mm -hmm. during our time at BCIT. And again, it's not impossible. It's mm -hmm. completely doable if that's the question. Is it easy? No. I know some of them had actually had to take a bunch of leave every time midterms would come in. Um, most, you know, if you have like a waitressing job and whatnot, most of us did. Um, we would just take time off every time there was there were midterms or projects. And we were very mindful and respectful of the people who did not have jobs because we didn't want to come off as while well, we're working so you guys do that you guys pick up our slack so we we were it's all about communication too right like hey guys i have a shift like six to nine i will get on it probably around 10 o'clock but i will have it done by tomorrow at like 10 10 a.m we, that's how we would always do our workarounds with it because if you know if somebody's working we're not going to tell them well no you should quit your job sometimes it's not possible you know some people are living off on their own and they have to make rent so I think the important part there is communication and just be really open and be respectful of each other's time yeah exactly yeah but to say it is definitely common though like it's mm -hmm. that most most people a lot a lot of people work while mm -hmm. going to be CIT it's not fun, but it's definitely not an uncommon occurrence. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I see a question here from Braden around student loans and fee deferral and access to student ID cards, use pass, et cetera. Uh, website says tuition must be paid first, but is it different with COVID this year? I don't know if Carolyn knows or maybe even Hunter, if you know. Yeah, I can definitely answer the, uh, the UPASS question. Um, with regards to BCIT's an ancillary fees, um, that's, that's a whole other thing. Uh, I believe that if you are getting a fee deferral, um, you can still get access to it. Um, I'm not sure actually what you would need your, your card for, um, given that everything's online. But with regards to UPASS, yeah, um, the Student Association, we're still in negotiations with TransLink right now, so that that whole situation is still sort of being resolved. We're not sure if there is going to be a, a UPASS uh, program this year. And if, if that ends up happening, you will get some piece of information about how, uh, how we're gonna move forward with, uh, with our UPASS fees. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully that sheds some light there. And I think Morgan for the rest, thank you Hunter for the rest. I think your best with the fee deferral, nothing's changed as far as we know with that with, with COVID, but I would advise you to contact financial aid, which you apply for fee deferral through, or just the general ask me at bcit.ca. Uh, it's a very specific question that, and, and we um, the academic units don't really deal with, uh, with, with fees that much. So just you'll have to contact some, someone else. And thank you again, Hunter, for that answer. Uh, Jeremy wants to know if we have any techniques or tips for keeping handwritten calendars and to-do lists. Jeremy, do you like paper as much as I do? Okay, then here, this next minute is for you. So, <laughs> I'm going to answer this because I'm like the oldest person here. Okay, so I make, I take my timetable. When you get this timetable from the timetable website or from my BCIT, I take that and I print that out and then I write the days of the month in there and that becomes my calendar because then I actually can see how little of the day is not BCIT and then in those gaps I write things like, um, well in my case take out the recycling, uh, when I eat lunch, going for bike rides, what subjects come where. And so uh, I myself am actually currently a student at UBC and I have a paper due tomorrow. And so tonight after my kids go to bed, I'm going, it's written 
in my school timetable, if that makes sense. So that's a really easy hack, using your timetable as your calendar and just print off as many copies as you want and then play around with that. And then I have a bunch of free real estate notepads and I write a to-do list every night before I go to bed. I read it every morning and I just cross things off as they happen. So that is how I keep handwritten calendars and to-do lists. Um, I see a comment from Veronica that not all courses are completely online. So depending, that's correct in the school business, depending on your program area, you might be required to be on campus. Percentage wise, it's an extremely tiny percentage of our courses that are hybrid. That's only for courses, say, where there's a broadcast component or a, like a digital design component where you need access to the technology on campus. So if you're not sure whether or not your program is completely online and you, you're not totally sure on that, the best person to email is usually your program head. So for instance, in marketing management, we have the entrepreneurship option, we have the tourism option. Those program heads are going to know if you're completely online or not. And I would say mentally the default is you're completely online unless there's a really exceptional reason this fall to be on campus, uh, just following the health guidelines of the province. Uh, we're, we're all gonna stay off campus unless we're absolutely needed there. So if, if you're not sure, definitely contact your program head. Yeah, uh, Morgan, sorry, I missed the start of your answer, so I don't know because I was reading other stuff, but there's some broadcast courses. Did you mention that? Yeah, yeah. you did? Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and multitask. <laughs> yeah, so um, Ye Young Yu says, uh, for the timetable link that you have sent us from the previous question, it shows team A and B. I'm not sure. Term A and B. Okay, so term A and B, that means you're probably looking at winter term. So there's think, only I one think it might be more, term. I think it might be more sets, sets A and B, not, not term, team, it's sets. Okay, so if you're wondering what set you're in, someone just asked me this, Carolyn, and I'm not sure, but just to describe mm -hmm. what a set is, a set is that's the other, those are the other 20 or so students that are going to take the same courses at the same time as you, and this is, this is where your teams are going to be coming from. Eventually, pretty early in the term, you're going to get a set rep, and that person is like the liaison between you as a little group of students and your instructors and your program head. It's really Really like your little club, your little gang, your little troop. I'm still friends with people from my set from 16, 17 years ago. So um, I don't know how you find out which set you're in right now, Carolyn. How do they do that? Uh, students, you might know better. I believe you either you should get an email from BCIT or your program head. Uh, easiest place to find your set is if you can find your schedule on my BCIT. It should be under mm -hmm. check my schedule. Uh, you're going to click all the way to September, uh, and then once you get there, in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see um, it, there should be a letter next to uh, next to like MKTG2B or C or something like that. That that'll be what set you're in. Thank you, Hunter. And just so that you know, uh, guys, so that was really helpful, new to me as well. So thank you. Um, for example, if you're in business management, there's two sets. If you're in marketing, there's 10 sets, right? So you can be in A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Financial management, I think there's 12 or 13 sets. Uh, operations management, there's seven. Uh, broadcast and media, I'm not too sure. So it's definitely something to look for because every set um, has a different uh, schedule, especially for the labs. Um, I'm going to quickly answer this question from um, Harjot. Uh, do BCIT students have summer breaks? Absolutely. If so, is it possible to take classes during the summer to reduce courses per semester? So uh, as if you are a full-time student and you are registered uh, in a full-time program at BCIT, it is not choose your own adventure. It is a set amount of courses that you take 
as we have developed with industry on the schedule that we have developed and your summer break, uh, you'll finish this year. So next May, after the May long weekend, you'll have your final exams roughly, give or take, and you'll have June, July and August off. So we finish a little later than some other programs because we cram more in, uh, but those breaks and those timings are completely set. Uh, and if, if you're in part-time st studies, then um, that's a totally different story, but this is a webinar for full-time students. So we're gonna assume you're a full-time student, in which case you just follow the path that we've set for you and all should be well. Um, and Abhe asked this question a while ago about the D3 program and how to meet people and network with people in the industry as well as peers, mates in a similar field. Uh, because your classes are online, how should they replace that in-person experience? So. I would say that's more going to be the work that your instructors and your program heads are gonna be doing as your program starts. So every program head, every department, we all have plans for how to help people connect online. Some programs are gonna use LinkedIn a bit more. Some programs are gonna have casual meetups on Zoom. Your set is gonna be a big part of that. Uh, that will kind of become your first immediate network. But every program at BCIT has lots of networking built in. So I would say for now, worry more about getting yourself ready for the term. And then as things unfold in the term, if you're super eager and you don't see those things happening, reach out to Ramen, for example, um, or, or someone else from your specific program area. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to um, have that happen for you. I think we have time for one more question and I see one question remaining in Q&A. Um, and it says, if things swing the wrong way with COVID, is there a plan B in line for those courses that have to be done in person? So just looking at the fall term, which is online only for almost all the programs, that's kind of why it's designed that way. If you need to be on campus, uh, there are already a lot of safety protocols in place uh, that were in place even when we were um, a two phases ago. And so um, distancing measures, physical distancing measures and other safety protocols in place. So yes, the programs where they're requiring students to come to campus from the very beginning have been extremely diligent about upholding the highest standard of what the province has set out. And, and that's why the rest of us are staying off campus because we wanna make as much space, as much availability of classroom space and other, if you come to campus, Campus, you will see there's really no one there. So it's to facilitate those people who really, really need to be there for very specific programs. And then, um, and we're constantly working, Carolyn and myself and the other ADs and all the managers, um, you know, we, we are not taking a lot of breaks right now because we're constantly thinking about all the different ways that things can go on campus. Um, so thank you for your great questions. I'm going to turn it back over to Carolyn just to wrap things up. Yes, uh, we do have about a minute left. Does anybody of your guests, do you guys have anything to add before I kind of close it up? Good luck and stay focused. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all need that. Uh, thanks, yeah. Melody. Okay, um, so as I'm closing this up, uh, Alicia is going to put another poll to see if you found this webinar useful uh, this this week today. That would be great if you can answer this, Alicia, if you want to put that up. Um, so thank you to Morgan and yes, I, I learned actually a lot today and I really like the tips that you guys had about exercising, about making sure Maria, Maria mentioned that, you know, having a station that's yours and that's really important. Um, there was also, you know, Hunter who mentioned like, take care of your, of others around you. Don't leave, you know, make sure nobody's left behind. And I think that's really um, good words of wisdom for all of us to, to, to think about. So thank you again all for uh, being here uh, today. Um, Sorry, Caroline, the second poll is not coming up in line with our technical issues. Okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> why can't I, we, thank you, Anisa Bero, why can't we see the second poll? Um, if it doesn't come up, it doesn't come up. It's all, maybe you can write in the chat if this was uh, useful or not, <laughs> if you like the webinar or not, then we can take the comments. Sorry about that technology. Um, just make sure as you move forward, I know there was a math assessment, a math assessment that needs to be done. I know if everybody has done it. You can go to uh, 
School of Business welcome page and all the information is there. As well, between August 31st and September 2nd, there'll be an English assessment to be done. You'll receive information about that. All these assessments are not for marks. They're just for us to know your level and how can we support you uh, better. Next week, uh, platform and apps for online learning. We'll dig in a little bit more into Learning Hub, Zoom, Bungo, all the different platforms that you uh, will be using. Thank you, Morgan, for putting the, you, you put it for all panelists. panelists. Can you put the link to all panelists and attendees? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Morgan's putting the link in the chat for you for the student welcome for the few things you need to do for the start of uh, school. So again, next week, we're gonna learn about uh, online, uh, the applications you're gonna be using. Um, so we look forward to that. And I think, thank you everybody uh, for attending again. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of each other, of yourself and each other, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.